I was not only the only daughter, I'm the only child of my parents. So I was brought up. My entire world was about equality, exposed to diversity in the country, diverse people, diverse thoughts, diverse cultures, diverse ideas. So I think that is something that has shaped me into who I am today. Yeah, hi. First up, uh, super excited for this conversation. Divya, tell me a little bit about your you as a child and your childhood, because I truly believe that who you are today is a product of your childhood. Right, like there are these little little seeds that are sown uh, into into the person that you are today. True, very very rightly said. And for women, especially when you when you come out and then you speak, and then a lot of times questions which are typically asked is, you know, what are the challenges faced? What are the obstacles you faced? And I say, you know what? Look at me as an example of what would happen if you give equal opportunity to a girl. Because literally till the time I entered the workplace, I never even knew of gender bias. You know, it was it was like I I, I was not only the only daughter, I'm the only child of my parents so i was brought up you know you know my entire world was about equality it was about how you how you give equal opportunities whether it's a boy or a girl never once faced discrimination because of my gender and right throughout you know i i started swimming at the age of five i was into gymnastics i sang everything would go to the british library on the weekends with my mother both working parents so and and i think that's something because when you grow up as an only child and with working parents if your mother is not giving you a lot of time you really you really feel very isolated that never happened to me although i did crib at times for a sibling i feel and i i never feel that i missed out on having company and uh, another thing was that i come from a i come from a defense background my father's from the air force so i had a lot of friends we lived in in this apartment complex in bangalore where we had a lot of lot of people to play with and grow with and that's so important social skills are developed when you spend time outdoors with people and and one thing was that although i was fortunate to not be relocated so many times my friends would literally change every two years so exposed to diversity uh, in the country diverse people diverse thoughts diverse cultures diverse ideas so i think that is something that has shaped me into who i am today i was somebody who was very academically oriented but also very focused on sports because my parents always instilled in me the importance of an all-round development and it was not that I was always into my books or anything so it was just that I enjoyed learning but I enjoyed playing as well so childhood was all about this and uh, and then I went and did my 11th and 12th very competitive because the two most crucial years of your life so I gave it uh, at, and maybe those two years were the years where I kind of focused on my studies so almost became a doctor i don't know for some reason i even though i went for my counseling and i got into the best colleges in bangalore for uh, medicine we just didn't take it at that point of time my father thought you know let her do engineering keep her options open so i did an engineering in biotechnology because biology was one of my favorite subjects and i loved math a rare combination bio and math together not many people like both and at that point is when uh, i i met byju i attended his classes and there was this period between you know you you apply for an admission and you get a seat so those were the three four months where he said hey why don't you just take a class and i went for a class and uh, it was it, i still remember it was a gallery a gallery seating 100 students and the impact it created i i could see the satisfaction and you know class after class i felt that this is something which i can do for a longer period of time something where i can see an impact happening something where because education is something where you you get a lot of satisfaction as a teacher so i started out as a teacher never knew what the journey had for me never knew that you know this this is how we would do what we are doing today but always fixated on a mission that we are in education because content is the king uh, and and that's the focus of all all that we do make children love learning so right so divya you mentioned that you were also into gymnastics swimming you loved singing were you the topper of your class was there a lot of emphasis on you know like how parents are sometimes very unidimensional ke uh, you know you're singing dancing or ye sab to theek hai but grades are grades and that's a non negotiable was that a non negotiable in your house no i wouldn't say that my father was more academically focused my mother uh, was more into all round development so it was a balance thank god for that i mean if both of them are the same then i would say there was immense pressure uh, but i think my see my father is also very academically focused and you know to be a doctor it's not easy and uh, he has so many degrees uh, like quite a bit of them so uh, considering the fact that he let me go after an engineering itself it's, it's something great so for them for him especially i think academics was very very important uh, but uh, i wouldn't say that he discouraged me from any of the extra extracurricular activities so my mother was a you know played a bigger role 
when i was growing up because if you are a doctor you you have to give your 100% to the job i mean it's it's only then you can do it in the best possible way so i practically don't even remember him getting involved uh, in my in my growing up years it's been my mother through and through it's been her parents through and through who were uh, you know in it who helped me mold me molded me into the kind of person that i was my father has been a very silent role model i've always looked up to him he's been my first teacher i would say uh, all the science uh, topics and everything he used to teach me so i've learned it from him i've developed my penchant for biology from him i can say that uh, he also says that you know i i speak nicely because of him i say okay it's possible so he he speaks really well as well so he jokes around today and says that so i i think you yeah. know these kind of things they all and and if i if i say you know it's not one person a lot of people say who's your mentor whom did you look up to it's definitely my mother although I, it's something that i've come to realize now i've taken it for granted that i would have a professional career because i've seen her work i've seen her manage a family i've seen her manage office and do it both so well tell me divya you make things sound uh, so simple and uh, you're juggling so many different things um, what's your superpower that that people don't see on social media that that still works in the background and makes everything else happen there is no superpower uh, i also get you know overwhelmed at times uh, it's it's not that you know like what 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 you see here is not indicative of it's it's but it's about acceptance i think you know for every woman accept that there are so many things happening in life accept that family is important work is important one at a time i think because this whole multitasking uh, feature which we talk about so much you know women are multitaskers that same thing can come back and hit you because if you try to do 10 things all at one time you end up giving 10% to each rather than you know picking up one by one and then giving 100% to maybe the top 5 you can't do 10 it's okay accept it pick up the top 5 and give it you know 100% attention one at a time and I, I, that's something which i do uh, when i do something i do it completely i don't i try not to distract myself although i know that there may be six seven pressing things but you just do it one at a time you're quicker at it and you end up resolving it completely and you're you also tick it off plus i am i am a planner and i i think nothing happens without planning so while we and as a company we have we have big dreams we have big aspirations but we also have broken down our goals into uh, quarterly goals monthly goals weekly goals and i would also have daily goals because that sort of uh, planning helps you uh, give more time to each thing give it the appropriate amount of time and also make sure that you do it in the best possible way i also want to ask you this with the abundance of having so much how do you teach the values of things to your children i think it's it's very valid because see, beyond a point it it doesn't matter right like you you even even if you talk about wealth you talk about fame so it it matters up to a point but beyond that it it really doesn't matter and i think if you can tell your children or teach your children that what really matters is family and you show that like i said it's always about leading by example what makes me happy today is the same thing that makes me happy 10 years back and i'll give you an example because i uh, for me the most important thing was being with my parents and uh, the the one of the reasons why i did not go abroad although it was very subconscious was i am the only child and if i leave them and go they would be alone so that was a very subconscious thing playing with me it's been important to me then and today also i i fought to to the nail and i brought them to the house opposite mine so uh, it, it, these things don't change like you and and f- the friends you have the friends who were there with you when you were zero and you come down and you come up to one the friends remain the same and 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 ultimately i think being with the people who have seen you grow being with the people who have uh, who understand what matters to you at that point of time and be and having that same sort of grounded uh you know effect throughout uh, and it's not just uh, it's not just about me even baiju is extremely uh, extremely ground and and we've all come up not from we've all come up on our own we've done work the hard we worked really hard this has, hasn't happened overnight it's happened over like decades uh for him decades and i would say at least the last 10 years of investing in how can we make something work we've done everything possible uh, in a startup to make it grow it's not just and we were bootstrapped for the initial 4 5 years we put in our our money our effort our time and built up the company so it's it's a company which is built by us built with a lot of love the people have been put put uh, you know by us and and we would and like like i said right for us people and i think that's what we need to teach our kids also it's not about you know who maybe uh, you know it's not about which car you're going in it's about whom you're going with in that car you know these are all simple things and 
with and and that is i think something which parents can definitely inculcate by leading uh, by example right that's so beautifully said who you're going with in the car that matters uh, tell me what's a typical day in the baijus gokulnath household like like how is it like what does it begin with what does it end with it definitely begins with work and ends with work <laughs> and and there is no time table now because babies have their own agenda uh you know so it's i am lucky that i am at least around now if he if he needs me or he cries and I'm, i'm there at least no i can i can go uh and and be there but one thing which uh, i immediately got back to doing after delivery was working out so i have resumed my workouts because i'm like for me i think physical health uh, is directly proportional to mental health and well being and uh, that is one thing and uh, 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 it's 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 chaotic it's it's planned yet chaotic because there are so many things which come in which need immediate attention but there are so many things which you would have planned to do which you need to do and uh, i i think it's all about it's 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 a lot of happiness uh, it's it's a lot of uh, because we are all surrounded by the people whom we love a lot so there's a lot of love there's a lot of happiness there's a lot of joy i'm very happy because i'm getting my uh, kids with me because although it's difficult yet the positive in it is that i would have never gotten these uh, these times with them otherwise and childhood just passes by like the elder one's already 7 and i don't know how that happened it I just mean, the younger one will grow up faster and i keep telling my younger one listen can you stop growing up right because i'm not going to have a third one now so i'm like you just want to hold on to to that piece right divya i must ask you this in the last decade you know and you just mentioned this in the last decade of building by jews do you feel like there's something that got left behind that you would want to pick up at a later date and i i know you said you're a woman of no regrets and you don't want to look back but do you feel like things or relationship or people or personal uh, anything that got left behind that that you feel like you want to pick up now frankly we've taken every day at a time and uh, i i don't know how we could have done on the work front maybe we could have done things better like you know every growing startup which is growing so fast has its share of mistakes in this whole spurt of growing but it's it's not that we haven't uh, learned along the way so it's important to keep learning as we as we have uh, because only then can you and always self and we we've, we've reflected i won't say that we we take we reflect on what we do and then we take the decisions so no regrets like you rightly said but uh, if i had to i mean uh, if i have to think of it differently maybe so one thing we did is we started with higher grades and then we went to lower grades maybe we should have done it the other way around because if you look at it they're more digital natives as you go as you grow younger like it would have been uh, i think that option is already very good but it could have been even more if we started with uh, younger kids and gone up that being said of course we want to do everything very fast uh, but that's not possible like could we there could we have uh, you know launched in launched in vernaculars only last year so it's gone like much deeper because of that because we have it now in hindi and bengali and gujarati and so many major regional languages but could we have done that if we could have done that 4 years 5 years back it would have been even more impact like as we launched the app but then things take their time and uh, we are also we are also coming up with new products to have uh, teachers take classes live for the students so all of these things could we have see it's just about can we do it faster but can we also do it better uh, but that see the thing is you need to give time for everything to lay out right so but thank you so much this has been incredible and and look forward to staying connected thank you so much mansi